Finally, some rare good news for Californians. Your health care costs in 2024 may not spike by as much as we were fearing, plus a really bad California law that has destroyed thousands of jobs is about to go national. All that and more coming up on Reform California. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and we've got the three stories that we're tracking today. And very rare do I get, rarely do I get to talk about good news. But today we do have a little bit of good news, um, if you can call it that, because really what we're talking about is some bad news that we were expecting and gearing up for. And the bad news is still coming. We're just getting a, a momentary reprieve. So if you followed all of that, the good news is that the bad news isn't coming immediately, but the bad news eventually will come. All right, so what am I talking about? Our top story today is Governor Gavin Newsom has cried uncle. Um, last year, we told you about this crazy bill to increase to $25 an hour um, the minimum wage in healthcare offices. Now, if you notice uh, the way that the Democrats sold this bad uh, uh, wage hike bill is that uh, nurses and doctors and paramedics and EMTs and first responders and healthcare uh, workers were not being paid. And these poor nurses, 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 they really emphasize nurses. As we told you back when the bill passed, not a single nurse is earning minimum wage in the state of California. Give me a frigging break. Stop lying to Californians, liberal media, and stop gaslighting us, liberal politicians. They use nurses and healthcare workers as window dressing. Who really benefited from the $25 an hour wage, minimum wage uh, uh, mandate bill for healthcare offices? The janitor, the food service worker, the front desk clerk, all of the SEIU union members, Service Employees Union International. And they are the ones, look at that right there. That's why in this picture, see the purple people, uh, uh, purple uh, uh, people eaters. They got those purple shirts on. Uh, Kaiser put patients first. Well, wait, putting patients first. How does giving uh, a, a massive uh, uh, minimum wage increase to the landscaper at the hospital complex. How is that helping patients? Or how about the person in the cafeteria getting $25 an hour? How, how does that help patients? You people are liars. You use nurses and healthcare professionals as your window dressing for these other folks that, again, I'm all for people getting a raise, but you know my view on minimum wage. Minimum wage actually hurts workers rather than helps them. It destroys jobs. And what it means is that um, we're, raising the cost of uh, creating new jobs versus letting people get in to the workforce at a sustainable wage for the skill sets that they have and then work their way up. Nobody should be working an entire career at minimum wage. That's insane. Hopefully you're developing skills and showing value and therefore getting raises and moving up the ladder. If you're stuck in a minimum wage job your entire life, there is something really, really wrong. And a mandate across the board is not going to fix that for that person. Uh, but there's the SEIU union, not the nurses union. It's the SEIU union out there hooting and hollering, chomping at the bit, demanding that their liberal politicians that they put into office with their union dues, the mighty dollar, the power of union money, that those campaign contributions better be uh, uh, valued and, and, and uh, uh, returned uh, in the form of this legislation. <clears throat> so SEIU you, you, um, uh, union bosses pushed this thing through, $25 minimum wage. And people thought at the time, oh, it's not going to cost a lot of money because the governor's office back in uh, the summer – when this bill was being finalized, said, oh, we don't know how much it's going to cost. We don't know. We don't know how much it's going to cost. Well, the governor signed it into law in September. And here we are, $25 minimum wage. And two weeks after he signs it into law, back in, I believe we covered this story um, in October, there was the financial estimate finally released by the state bureaucrats. And they knew the financial cost all along. 
Um, they, they, it, by the way, the, the bill is Senate Bill 525, in case you want to look at the actual legislation. Um, the cost is a staggering $4 billion to state government, of which $2 billion comes from the general fund, $2 billion comes from the Medi-Cal uh, fund, which is uh, in large part reimbursed by the federal government. But $4 billion would be the impact to raising the minimum wage for the state of California. Now you, might, you might wonder, well, wait a minute, we're, we're requiring a minimum wage increase for all of the uh, uh, medical and healthcare uh, operators in the state. How is that impacting the state budget? Ah, well, we already pretty much have socialized medicine. We have a big role for government in our healthcare system, our healthcare costs. Government is one of the biggest payers. So right now, when you take a look at the percentage of our um, uh, 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 healthcare costs, uh, government is paying more than 50% of every healthcare transaction, federal government and state government. Um, the state of California, that $4 billion, represents approximately mm, 35 to 38% of, of the costs. And so when you really look at what the true cost of this minimum wage hike is, if it's hitting the state of California's budget at $4 billion, it's going to hit your pocketbook in the form of a $10 billion cost increase. So that's a total of $14 billion for this one bill to be implemented. Let me repeat that. $14 billion is the added cost of us requiring that a minimum wage be set in every healthcare establishment, whether it's a healthcare worker or not. $25 minimum wage equates to a $14 billion economic industry healthcare sector price spike 14 billion now we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars of costs in the um, uh, uh, medical field for um, healthcare services just in california alone but 14 billion dollars would be the impact here in the state of california from just one one minimum wage hike that's staggering that is enough to devastate a healthcare market a healthcare system that runs on very small margins, where only in many cases a percentage of the costs of a healthcare procedure are recovered by uh, government payment or the uh, person actually receiving the, the the benefit of that healthcare treatment. A lot of illegal immigrants come in; they're getting free healthcare, whether it's funded by the government or not. They're getting free healthcare uh, from you and me because they don't pay, and as a result the cost of our services and treatments and ER visits, doctor visits are higher because what, what the medical world does is they kind of move money around based upon, well, what's the total cost of providing all the services to all the clients? And some of them don't have insurance. Some of them have really substandard insurance. So what's the total cost? And we'll just spread the cost around. So you're paying for people with um, um, uh, substandard uh, coverage or no coverage at all. Here you have this minimum wage increase. And we know that government is not a good payer when it comes to health care. So if government is already booking this on their balance sheet as a $4 billion increase to them, you know damn well the $10 billion estimate that I just gave for you and me, which would be the total of $14 billion, is probably on the low end. A $10 billion increase in our cost of going to the ER, our cost of getting an x-ray, our cost of fixing a broken arm, our cost of going in just for our annual wellness check. You and I are going to be paying that. So I wanted to set that stage because we covered this a few months ago when this went into effect and this first uh, the budget estimate came out at $4 billion. And I said, this is insanity. It's also going to be a sucker punch to you and me in terms of our healthcare costs. Well, now that Gavin Newsom is facing a massive budget deficit in the state of California, $68 billion, he's decided, you know, that bill that I just signed into law just, oh, I don't know, eight weeks ago, 12 weeks ago, we need to delay implementation because we can't afford it. 
The state can't afford it. Um, the question becomes, is he going to just simply say, well, can we narrow it down so that we don't pay the cost and that everyone else does? Oh, they would love to do that. Politicians love to pass the burden onto you rather than just their state budget. Um, that would be hard to affect because a minimum wage is a minimum wage. And as I just mentioned to you, this is how healthcare financing works. They kind of lump all the costs together and then they just try to figure out what to charge for cost reimbursement to, to make themselves whole. So we are going to be given a temporary reprieve. So the good news is not that he says, oh, golly, this bill cost more than I thought. We're going to cancel the bill entirely. No, 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 no. The, the piper will be paid. The pain is scheduled. It's just going to be put off for a little bit. And we eventually will get the sucker punch in our wallet when it comes to the increased cost of this stupid bill, this costly and irresponsible bill. Why? Because the SEIU union goons are out there demanding more chum, more cheese, more goodies. Um, another bill that needs to be um, repealed in California is sadly spreading to the rest of the country. And I've always said the reason why we fight in California and rather than flee is number one, we are able to move the, the needle if we get our act together and we can save the state. Number two, we absolutely have shown that we are relevant to the House of Representatives in terms of giving the national majority. And number three, Bad ideas start in California and spread like a contagion. And if we're not fighting those bad ideas out here, then we actually put at risk the rest of the country. So if you move to another state, guaranteed the contagion will follow you. And this is a perfect example of that. So many of you know that I have made a lot of uh, stink about a bill called AB5, Assembly Bill 5. It was authored by Lorena Gonzalez. She is now the California Labor Federation union boss for the state of California. She's the boss of the bosses. Um, and she's a bully. She wrote this legislation that basically says that we are going to ban <coughs> independent contractors in the state of California. No independent contractors, no gig economy will be allowed in the state of California. The reason why she's doing that is twofold. Number one, um, she wants everyone to be a full-time employee because then you're forced to pay all those taxes, payroll taxes, unemployment taxes, workers' comp taxes, all into the system. And she's got this pyramid scheme. And you need to continue to get people to pay into the, the, the corrupt, broken, expensive pyramid scheme that the unions and labor have created. Uh, and they don't like independent contractors because they're not employees. They're 1099s. They're, they're able to kind of be their own Schedule C you know, sole proprietor. So she doesn't like that. Uh, she needs your money. Uh, second reason why is that she wants to unionize you. And if you're uh, an independent contractor, gig worker, you're not a member of a union because you're not an employee of that company. Now, we cannot have a prosperous economy without independent contractors. The gig economy is the new economic paradigm. And people don't even want in many cases, to be an employee. They would rather be a 1099, a Schedule C, uh, an independent contractor. Um, they want the flexibility of being able to you know, make their own small business viable and expand it, maybe incorporate someday and have employees of their own. Small businesses start out in many cases as 1099s. Um, they also like the flexibility of working for more than one client. They get bored. They want innovation. They want excitement. They want uh, creativity and diversity of, of uh, challenges. And they like to specialize rather than taking a job that requires them to do some things that they don't particularly like, but it's in the job description. They like to specialize in the thing that they're passionate about. So independent contractor work is a good thing, but it was banned in California. Many people are still breaking the law. They're breaking AB5 uh, and they're going to get in trouble. Uh, and so in California, we have a war on gig workers, and now it's spreading. This story in Fox News uh, from today shows that uh, Joe Biden at the Department of Labor, his political hacks that he's appointed, are issuing regulations that are uh, designed to implement an AB5 system nationwide. Uh, and, of course, uh, they want to see a law passed in Washington that would impose AB5 on all Americans. Uh, that would be a complete disaster. You want to talk about destroying the national economy with one fell swoop. That would destroy it. 
California is already struggling. And a lot of these independent contractors I hear from, they are being told they're not allowed to apply or bid on work for um, uh, if they're located in California. There's actually solicitation websites that say, oh, need, bidders need not apply if they are located in California. So all of these workers, small businesses are um, uh, excluded from that, that pool and it makes us less competitive. Um, so now Biden is trying to implement this uh, nationwide. And uh, what they're trying to do is implement something called an ABC test nationally. Um, and that basically determines whether you are an independent contractor in the eyes of uh, California law uh, or whether you are uh, an employee. And so um, the Department of Labor uh, is moving forward with a national ABC test, even though the U.S. Supreme Court has, has ruled that the Department of Labor has no authority to impose this, that they would have to go and get congressional authorization. Um, that's why holding control of one house of the Congress is key is to stop something bad like this. But the regulations will start looking at classification. It'll start looking at reporting burdens. How many independent contractors do you have? It's all laying the groundwork for the expansion of AB5 to all the other states in the union. Again, this is a perfect example of why we have to fight like hell in California against bad policies like AB5. Um, so that is something that we're tracking and watching. All of this gets me to the, the point about the election. Elections have consequences, and we're gearing up at Reform California for the 2024 election cycle. Some of you know I'm running for a California state legislative seat, Assembly District 74, and I need your help. Go onto the website, reformcalifornia.org, and chip in a web uh, a, a contribution on the web portal there. In fact, there's the button, contribute. Super simple. It is secure. But I also want to draw your attention to our voter guides, which we went to print this week on our mailing version of the voter guide. Um, but the voter guide is listed online, and you can access all of the races. So I'm, if you go to electionguidecalifornia.org, electionguidecalifornia.org, um, you can have different counties that you can uh, look at. Uh, for the local races on your ballot. But here's the statewide guide, and I think this will get the statewide proposition as well as the um, um, uh, 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 congressional races, the state legislator uh, races. Um, and so we've got uh, throughout uh, the state, every single race, we, we tried to issue an endorsement. Uh, in some cases, We'll tell you who not to vote for, like District 20. Definitely not Andy Morales or Melissa Wood. Um, although on the District 20 race, I think we're going to be issuing an endorsement on that soon, so stand by. Um, but most of the time, we are able to find someone that we do like uh, in, in the seat um, in your area. So check out that website, electionguidecalifornia.org, electionguidecalifornia.org. That goes directly to that page with all the county voter guides and the um, uh, uh, statewide voter guide as well. Um, I love what I did with the U.S. president. Republican nomination, obviously, Donald Trump. Uh, Democrat nomination, because we are technically a nonpartisan voter guide. You are doomed. We could find nobody that was worthy. Um, sadly, that's the state of the Democrat Party. It's so extreme, far left. Um, but I do want to encourage you to share this voter guide with people because it is nonpartisan and uh, it is uh, all about helping us unite voters who are not happy with the direction of the state behind a change agent in every single seat. Electionguidecalifornia.org. Also check out Proposition 1, which is a proposition that we're urging a no vote on. It's a terrible proposition. It would raid treatment programs to subsidize government welfare housing projects. Um, developers would get rich and the homeless crisis would get worse. So check that out, electionguidecalifornia.org. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website reformcalifornia.org for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state.
you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.